Hi everyone, um, Rakesh Karana, Dan of Dean of Harvard College. Um, I hope everybody's doing well and staying healthy. I am so delighted today to have Sandra Zhang uh, join us um, as part of our conversation series that we've been doing. Um, and um, just really delighted to be able to engage with our students at this moment um, as uh, you know, everybody's working through circumstances that nobody expected uh, this summer. Uh, but uh, Sandra, it's so good to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, of course. So Sandra, um, maybe rather than me doing your bio or telling your story, you want to just share a little bit of who you are and the usual Harvard intro. Um, and then maybe a little bit like, you know, what are some of the things that you do at Harvard? Sure. Yeah, I'm Sandra Zhang. I'm a rising senior in Courier House. I'm concentrating in history and science with a focus in medicine society, and I'm getting a secondary in global health and health policy. I'm pre-med. I'm um, a member of the Harvard women's volleyball team, and I'm currently the captain for this upcoming season. That's so great. Uh, well, thanks for being here. Um, so, Sandra, um, so you just got named captain um, for the upcoming season. And, you know, obviously the spring unfolded in ways that none of us had anticipated. And I was just wondering, you know, how has that played out for you? How's it played out for your team? What have been some, what are some of the challenges and what have been some of the surprises? Yeah, so last season, many of us were injured. So the spring season was super committed to the team taking care and improving our injuries and getting healthier and while also improving our strength in the areas we can. So COVID really shifted the way we kind of approach this goal since many of us with injuries relied on the athletic training center for treatment um, for ongoing inju injuries and therapy. So therapy for improving our injuries have been a little bit more difficult. We've been having Zoom meetings with our athletic trainers, um, but most of us haven't been able to been going to like physical therapy places to get you know the treatment that we sh um, usually would have been getting during the year but also at the same time um the stay-at-home order forced us to stay at home and allowed our bodies to heal through rest so that's also been great too wow that's 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 good to hear that people are healing but it also sounds difficult not to have you know the folks around and stuff so what are things that as captain that you've been encouraging people to do in terms of healing oneself both physically but also socially and uh, taking care of one's mental health um, you know what have you been doing for yourself what do you uh, what do you and your team talk about um, yeah so our team is um, very close so I think being apart away from each other has been taking a toll on us we usually we usually spend a lot of time together during the year so for mentally like healing mentally we try to still talk and interact with as much as we can with each other so we have like group texts we have a like group me snapchat just for a way for us to you know like contact them like not with any questions but just seeing each other's faces or like talking about certain topics you know it's just nice for everyone to stay in the loop and once a week we have zoom meetings with the coaches and there will be a before reading period, it was just time for us to check in and we used to play cute games like Pictionary or like Bingo, you know, as a team. But also this team meeting has been used for us now as a place for us to talk about important topics. And we've been you know, watching videos together and discussing it, which has been really helpful for educating our team about how we can move forward for the next coming years. That's great. Um, I that must have been quite a transition. Um, and, you know, when, when you do that, like, what are the things that have surprised you about, like, your teammates or about this whole process that's been really interesting about, like, things people are doing? Yeah, so I think what's been surprising that, like, you know, despite everyone being across the country and, you know, on, on every, everyone has, like, their own kind of schedule and their own family plans, everyone's still committed to, you know, coming to the Zoom meetings and, you know, being participating into it, you know, it's not easy finding a day, a time of the day to like dedicate to that. So it's been really nice seeing everyone's faces. How are you doing it being in Hawaii? That's a different time zone, um, pretty significant. Um, um, how are you managing? Like, are you doing these early in the morning, later in the evening? Yeah, so I'm six hours behind East Coast time. So it, I usually wake up at 4 a.m. because I have work meetings at 4 a.m. 
um, yeah, so I'm, I'm usually, I turned into an early bird, was really never an early bird before, but here I am now. Um, things could be worse. You know, I have a laptop, I have Wi-Fi, and I have the resources for me to, you know, get um, resources for me to go to those meetings. And so I'm just really grateful for where I'm at now. That's great. Uh, I, you know, when you hear about Harvard students waking up 4 a.m., it's usually maybe once or twice a year to catch an early flight. <laughs> so it's great to, um, uh, you know, that you've been able to adapt, but I'm sure it's not easy um, um, uh, either. And, and, and thank you for, uh, you know, meeting that challenge. Um, so how's home life been? Like, what is the sort of everyday like you know, things for Sandra, you mentioned, you know, um, being in family and that Hawaii's had some sort of pretty, at least what you read in the paper, um, um, social distancing has been pretty sort of um, enforced early um, and, uh, you know, visitation and those types of things. There's a lot of management around that. What, what, what's happened? Yeah, so my grandma just turned 90 years old this year. And my mom's an ICU nurse, and she actually is in contact with COVID patients in her hospital. So it's been really interesting how our family at home, like, social distance with each other. So, like, now we kind of don't really eat dinner together just so we can avoid certain, like, contacts just in case for my grandma since she is really old. And, and um, but... And I've been trying to help out more with my grandma, you know, like making dinner and stuff, just so I could keep the load off my mom. Um, my mom did for a while sign up for like a hotel program for the um, hospital, could send nurses to stay in a hotel if someone in their family or household was like a person that was at risk. So that's been nice. But overall, um, I've just been really staying at home. I haven't been I actually like never go out of the house, kind of. I kind of just stay in my yard and do workouts in my yard. But it's been really nice. The weather's been great. So, and I enjoy seeing the sun. Yeah, um, that sounds difficult though, um, with um, both the really important work that your mom's doing and the front lines of this pandemic, um, but also to have your grandmother, um, you know, who is at an at risk population um, and that you're taking on that responsibility, um, kind of navigating uh, all of that. Um, that sounds challenging um um it's I, it could be worse really yeah but it's well, okay this is what i love about our students is you have such a thoughtful sense of perspective and that you always are thinking about how others needs are being met and uh, putting yourself out there so what is uh just out of curiosity as a person who was not a varsity athlete in college. Uh, what does a everyday workout look like in the backyard of yes. Sandra? So actually, so I've been also having all pro, I've been having a sub, um, a injury for a year now, which is regarding my back. So I've been actually been pretty modified with my workout. I can't do any heavy lifting with my lower body. So um, thankfully our Frazier, which are, is our strength conditioning coach, um, sent us all a packet and it gives us, you know, like a detailed workout of like, you know, like every day of the week or like, you know, like what warm ups, what kind of cardio. So it's been really nice following that. I obviously modify in the ways I need to modify it, but you know, he has like sprints for us or anyways. And he also has like simple body weight things that we don't need. Um, we don't need to have equipment for. So I just do those in the yard. And I also had a, I also trained with a group in high school. So we got back together and we, train through zoom twice a week so that's been nice yeah well that that must have been interesting to see how people's kind of lives have changed and uh since high school and to sort of be back in that connection with people you had played volleyball with in high school yeah so it's uh, been nice that's, that must be cool yeah mm -hmm. so were people also i guess they all a lot of folks must have had to come back um over the spring in terms of as colleges and universities made decisions about de-densifying campus and things like that yeah, and our coach is nice enough to just be like, oh, college girls, I'll just have a Zoom meeting with you twice a week, and I'll just help lead you guys through workouts for an hour. So he's been really nice. That, that, that's great. Um, I understand you're doing some research this summer, too, in addition to sort of managing, you know, obviously in, at home, but um, managing to kind of recover and take care of your physical and uh, health and well-being, that you're also doing some research this summer. What, what's that like? How are you able to balance that? And what are you working on? 
Yeah, so I'm working in a palliative care research group at Brigham Women's Hospital and Mashgen Hospital, and it's regarding co the COVID pandemic. And I guess um, for those who don't know what palliative care is, um, palliative care is like an interdisciplinary medical approach that's aimed at like optimizing the quality of life and mitigating um, suffering among people who face a serious and complex illness. So within palliative care is something called advanced care planning and advanced directives which is about making decisions about the health care you'd want to receive during while you're facing a medical crisis. So, um, so like as predicted, like COVID has a big impact on like advanced care planning because many, in case, you know, people were to be intubated, they would be unable to voice and make their own advanced directives and choices. So it's been really important for us to study at how COVID's been affecting the way people have been approaching advanced care directives. And the COVID, the COVID pandemic has been emphasizing the importance of establishing an advanced directive in case you or someone in your family gets sick. So we've just been looking at that, how you know, like terminally ill or elderly are approaching kind of like in case they get you know, corona. Mm -hmm. are, are there any books that uh, in such difficult subject that you've read that have shaped your thinking in this area? Yeah, so I was always interested in um, palliative care because when I shadowed my mom in ICU, you know, I saw the need for the increase of palliative care and not just, um, and just a, tr just a treatment for the quality of life, you know, like people I know like elderly are just, you know, they haven't voiced out what they truly want. So I really was interested in palliative care. And my sophomore year I wrote about um, military, my junior year, I'm sorry, I wrote about militarized terminology and how that could create a stigma toward palliative care. So like the word fight and like, you know, battle and survivor, how that could create a negative stigma toward patients choosing a route such as palliative care. Um, so I think the book Being Mortal, is a great book by Atola Gawande. It's a great book and it really tackles this kind of topics of between like the approach toward death sort of, yeah. I read that book too. Um, and it was really profound and, and, and deep. And w what I really appreciate uh, that you, you said is about the importance of the words and the language that we use. Um, and what was also interesting to me about the book was the cultural comparative aspects of how mm -hmm. mortality and life is approached across different societies and that really was really interesting um, for me living as an at the intersection of being uh, South Asian and you know how we think about that and um, um, you know age and and um, contrasting that with kind of also growing up in the United States which um, I found to be so interesting. What was the sort of thing for you that sort of jumped out for you in that book? Yeah, so my mom being an ICU nurse in America, you know, obviously she was, you know, kind of trained like in, with the Western ideals. So, and then for her, I know it's been difficult. You know, her parents still, I mean, her father used to still live in China back when he was, he didn't, before he passed away. And, you know, like she was very conflicted because her family members in China didn't really understand the idea of like, you know, palliative care and just, you know, treating his symptoms rather than treating his illness. So my mom was very conflicted with, you know, what she sees at work and what she tells other family members, but versus like what she's actually experiencing, you know? So that was like definitely something that was like tricky in, in our family, which was like very interesting. But that's really that's really interesting about what you shared um, um, and you know like how at work and given our different ways that we connect to family and stuff how, how we manage that I am so glad that you were able to spend a few minutes with us today and with me I'm glad to see your face I really miss seeing all of our students and um, I miss seeing you on the shuttle bus um, <laughs> <laughs> to, <laughs> on the quad shuttle I miss uh, the shuttle I know, too uh, yeah. Would you ever think that you would be saying that? <laughs> no, honestly, no. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We all miss, I think we all miss just being co-present with each other and that sort of just passing each other and, and that look of acknowledgement and sort of just saying hi, you know, with our eyes and not always, you know, but anyway, uh, I'm glad you were able to join us. And um, Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate your leadership for your team, for you as a student, um, the research that you're doing. And I just wanted to wish you um, and your family and your friends and all loved ones all the best um, 
You too. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. All right. Take care. Thank you.